Taking an inventory of ourselves is vital if we ever want to improve our life, if we ever want to have better relationships with our spouse, with our parents, with our kids, with our friends. We have to know ourselves really well. We have a tendency as humans just to say it's always somebody else's fault and never look at ourselves. And that is a big issue. And one of the first steps in that is to surrender. And a lot of people hear that. A lot of people, when you go to most denominations of church or 12 step programs or a bunch of other things, there are a lot of people that just say in their coaching is to surrender. And surrender is a tough thing. Surrender to the flow of life, not forcing anything, allowing what some call the spirit or the infinite energies to guide your thoughts and emotions without force. Because I don't know y'all, but if you try to force anything and not surrender to just the process, it never typically works out well. It just doesn't. We can't force anything. And Letting go. A lot of people say let go and surrender, but let go of what? I know a lot of people that just go, what are you talking about? I don't have anything to let go of. I don't have to surrender. What do you mean? I think if we start to think of our own programs of what we tell ourselves, we, we learn that we have to rewrite how we communicate to ourselves. And most people don't get that their entirety of their life. Like people that are 50, 60, 70, right before they're dead. Like they've never even figured out that they've been programmed their whole life and they don't even know what to let go of, which can be a big problem. And the practice is we, we can elevate ourselves. I don't know if y'all, I think y'all come because y'all are like our poor group of regulars here today. And y'all are here almost every Sunday. And I believe, and I may be wrong about this, but I believe y'all are here because it elevates y'all in some way you know like you feel closer we're actually creating friendships like it's not bs like i've talked with a lot of y'all all the time we trade information we talk somebody needs something we you know we're just we're here for each other and that has been my goal of having this place and offering it to the public to create that and and in that elevation we, we kind of surrender to each other you know where we are um giving, surrendering of our time. We're not, uh, we're surrendering the idea of forcing a relationship. We're just allowing it to be. And we're fostering that. And that is another way to view the whole surrender idea. You know, why should I surrender? Some people don't even understand it. What am I surrendering? Most people don't know. Can you ask those questions? And then how do you surrender in the first place? A lot of people don't understand that either. And then surrender to what? You know, there are a lot of notions of what is a higher power, what is God, what is the infinite energies. Uh, nobody knows. Nobody. I mean, we all have our own idea. We all have our individual thoughts of what that is. Some people say nothing. Some people say, you know, like me, the infinite, it's a scientific fact. So I really am, I understand it well that there are energies all around us at the cellular level. They are perpetual motion machines. They are full of energy, and I exude energy. It's measurable. You don't even need a machine to measure it, even though you can. As we've talked about this many times, if you walk into a room, all of a sudden, like Randall walks in, he's more with smiling and laughing. What happens? All of a sudden, we're elevated. You know, I walk over, or I walk in Steve's house, and I have coffee with him normally once a week. I walk up, I'm, I'm thinking about something else normally. He walks out, hey bud, I'm so glad you're here. And instantly I forget anything that's on my mind. I see my buddy Steve and I'm elevated. And that is to me what we are surrendering to. And know thyself, man, knowing yourself is really, really, really difficult because nobody wants to do it. We've, we've mentioned this many times before, it is difficult. Understanding yourself, if you can do it, if you can practice it, and practice the art of knowing and talking to yourself, you can reconstruct who you are and build better thoughts. You can, many people can heal their bodies, they can heal their anxieties, they can not let everybody else piss them off. 
Like we have the power inside of us to do that. To know yourself, you know, and why are you a sex addict? You know, why are you, why do you have to drink into oblivion and ruin every relationship and destroy your body, destroy your property, destroy everything? Like why do people do that? Why do you have to do that? Because you don't really know yourself. You're covering and masking because you don't want to have those emotions. You don't want to deal with life. We are the spiritual optimists of ourselves. We have the ability to ask ourselves questions and tough questions, and it's okay. We should ask them, like we should, why? Who and what am I? You ever think, if you look at a computer, they are very similar to the human mind, like how they lay out, how the, the synapses fire and it communicate. Computers act very similar. We mimic computers on how humans this machine, if you will. So what is our operating system? How did our operating system become into being? You know, from zero to seven, this is a this is just factual. The human mind from that formative year, zero to seven, we are in a hypnotic state. All of our behaviors are learned. If our parents yell and scream to solve issues, then we are probably going to yell and scream to solve issues. If our parents are loving, we are probably going to be loving. That is just the way things are. If we think things are impossible as we get older and we're down on ourselves, it's very likely the influences around us in those early ages were the same way. So are we actually the operators of our operating system? Most people answer is no, you are not. You are guiding on a program that was set for you that you don't even realize you had. So those are important questions to start really thinking about. And can you do that? Can you just sit outside of yourself and look like, oh man, why am I getting so fat? You know what I mean? Can you do that? Can you say, what am I doing to myself? Oh man, uh, why is my liver about to explode because of my belly to stick up? You know what? Oh my God, can I do that? No, most people can't do that. It hurts them. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm Andrew, I'm the toughest guy in the world. And I don't have to think about anything. You know, a lot of people do that. And they let, they just drive on that operating system and never examine why. And they're not willing to look at it. You know, we have to release our attachments, whether they're good or bad. Not that we can't appreciate what we have, but we have to. We have to appreciate our friendships. We have to appreciate our vehicles. We have to take care of our things because we like to drive from our house to the grocery store. You know, I mean, like we have attachments, but we don't have to identify our being with that attachment. It's a difficult thing to start wrapping your head around and being willing to look at yourself and how you subscribe to yourself, you know, what you think of yourself. I used to have a real fancy car about 20 years ago. I've never been a car guy. I've always loved trucks, but for some reason I felt I needed to be fancy. And being fancy, because uh, I'm, you know, I'm not Kevin Schmidt. I'm doing all these deals all over the country. You know? Look at me. And I realized I was attached to it. I felt my identity when I pulled up in a super fancy car. Everybody looked at me. I got out. Everybody was like, ooh, I wonder who that is. Look at that fancy car. And I thought, and I started to think, right as I understood and I recognized that emotion, I was like, oh. Could I do without that feeling? Am I attached to that thing because it makes me more important to myself and how I perceive myself, how others are seeing me? So I got rid of it like, really quickly. I was like, okay, let's see if I can live without that. Then I realized it was just totally fine. But I didn't need that. That's interesting because I'm really happy driving my truck, even though I just did buy another fancy car. But, uh, there can be zero growth if we're unwilling to live outside of our comfort zones. Like we can't grow at all. You know, if your husband wants to hug you all the time and you don't want to, and living outside of your comfort zone to hug back is a problem, well, you've got a problem. If Steve wants to talk to me all the time and I don't want to talk to Steve, then our relationship has a problem. If I need something, like I need a higher paying job, I need whatever I feel like I need, and I'm unwilling to take the steps to get there, then I have a problem because I'm not willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. 
The Lord is preventing my willingness. Like, can I, can any of us here, can we exist without our willingness? Like, we all have to be willing to come here. We all have been willing to create our relationships with each other. And all of these relationships that we have, because I have a pretty good relationship with everybody here. Actually, everybody. I just really don't know you very well. Yeah. But we do. Why? Because we all have a willingness that we know we're going to be here for each other. Like, I would think everybody in here, maybe except for three, has called me for something. And why do they call me for something? Because I knew for sure I was going to be there. Like, there was no doubt in my mind. Yeah, was I there? Yes. And did I feel the exact same thing with them? Like, if I called them, would they be there for me? Yeah. Like, I feel like, I feel like, like without even thinking. Like, I am willing because I know they're willing and I know we're both willing and we're working together. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. So, without willingness, nothing good can exist. And we have to prepare ourselves. Man, we've got to be able to say, hey, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry to myself. You know, just forget everybody else. Like, if you can't forgive yourself, you can't forgive anybody else. Like, you have to be able to tell yourself, I'm sorry. Can you? I mean, like, can you just sit with yourself and go, hey, man, you know, you got tore up last night. You were really rude to a bunch of people. Can, can you even think in your mind to say, hey, I'm sorry to myself. Hey, you've really been talking negative and you lost your job because every time you go to work, you're like, man, I hate this. It's like, I hate this crap. You know, if you're telling yourself that and you, you recognize that's what you're doing, but you can't say, hey, take a step back. I'm sorry myself for acting this way. Let's improve. Let's improve. Let's make a difference. We have to clear our, like, this, this, like this pain body inside of us. You know, like, what's that big fear if you want to tell somebody um, anything? Like, you have something important you want to say. Like, Jill maybe want, wants to talk to me about it. Anything. Maybe she wants to change jobs or not be a nurse or do something else. Whatever she wants to do. And like she has this inner fear she can't tell me about. You know, like there, there's these blockages inside of us from that learned behavior of the reasons why we can't surrender to our friends, our spouse, or everybody. We have to say I'm sorry. We have to we have to clear it out. Let life just be. We have to have living integrity. We have to honor our word. We have to be the operators of our operating system. And we have to hold ourselves accountable. Because if you say you're showing up, you better damn show up. All of a sudden, there's no trust. There's nothing. We can't really function in disrepair. I can't love you if I don't love you. I can't really meaningfully hug you if I don't want to ever hug myself. Man, we got some great hugs in this place. I mean, like everybody here that I hug, like I feel their love and energy. And I am very grateful for it. Like, we're super grateful for it. So, do we choose to live in despair or do we choose to live in repair? I think we all need a catalyst. Like, some people's catalyst is hitting rock bottom. Like, Andrew knows this really well from his experience in helping other people. Some people just can't, can't prepare themselves at all until they have some kind of catalyst. Like, they have to lose everything. There's their family, their friends, all the possessions, everything before they realize, hey, I think it was me that was the asshole. You know, this is what it is for some people. But it doesn't have to be if we start working on ourselves sooner than rather than later, and we can deconstruct the old. It was like uh, when me and Kyle were talking about the other day. You know, we are about two years old. Every one of us. All of our cells, they're just replicating to be what they were in that moment. So we look older. But they're just brand new. They were, they were replicating what they were a second ago. And after about two years, we know that our whole body's new. Every day, we're new water. Every day. We've talked about this at length. Every day, we piss it out. We evaporate it out. We crap it out. We're brand new beings all the time. So we have the ability to be the operators and to know that we can recreate life every day. We are the creators of our own life. We are recreating it every single second without even thinking about it. We're recreating cells every second and hundreds of millions of them, even random. Even random recreates itself. 
You know, we have a lot of tools at our disposal to help us. We have breath work, we have meditation, we have emotional exercises, mantras, which we just uh, started one a minute ago before this presentation. Affirmations, telling ourselves, you know, I am good enough, I do belong. I am worthy of this thing, or this relationship, I am. You know, sometimes I catch myself, and I've told a few of y'all here this, that I'll catch myself, man, I'm just not worthy of my relationship with you. Like, I feel that sometimes. I'm like, man. Well, I got to catch myself and go, well, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are, big boy. You are good enough. And what if I didn't? What if I didn't do that? You know, what if I said, yeah, I'm really not. I'm really not good enough for you. Well, then I would just spiral it out of control. I would lose too, and I would have been the catalyst that caused that to happen. And that is stupid. Like, it's just really stupid. You know, what is your catalyst? What's your, what's your, what? Why are we so self sabotaging? What's your pain, fear, heartache, anger? I mean, what, what? Something. We all have to be normal. You know, we all have to show our face to somebody else. What is our face? Like, oh, I got to put this mask on. Oh, everything's great. Everything's so good. When everything may not be so good. And if it's not so good, can't you tell yourself and figure it out because you are the operator of your system? <clears throat> you just are. Man, I'm impressed by Dean. I mean, like, impressed. Dean impresses the crap out of me, man. I mean, like, wow. It, his mindset from over a year ago to now is like unbelievable. Like, you just like hanging around Dean. I never knew Dean was funny until like just several months ago. I mean, Dean is like unbelievable. He's just talked himself into opening up and to surrendering to these relationships. It's been unbelievable. We have to connect. We have to have conversations. We have to. We've mentioned this before. What is the worst form of torture? It's to be in an isolation camp. Just to be in an isolation box. Like that's the worst thing ever. We have to have each other. So why not be around people that are going to elevate us? Why not be around people that are going to give us the love and respect that we know we deserve? Because if my buddy, Navy Seal Shaman Steve, said, hey, I think you're an asshole. You know, and if he was talking to me like that all the time, I would feel bad. And I wouldn't want to be around my buddy Steve. But he doesn't do that. Every time I see him, you'd never think that big old tough guy over there is like the most beautiful bear hunks you've ever seen. It's just fantastic. Am I willing to trust the conversation with myself? It's tough. We have to be tough on ourselves. We have to look. You know, if me and Jill got in a fight, and my first reaction is, that dumb bitch. You know, I, you know if that was my first reaction, man, I'm setting the stage for disaster. Like, right out of the gate, me and Ricky started getting into a fight. Me and Ricky were having a couple of little racial boys in each other. And, but what if in those moments, which I haven't happened, I'm, I'm pretty positive Ricky has thought this, but I have not, is that complete dumbass. Like, why is he yelling at me? Why is he acting like this? I just know he's frustrated at whatever it was at the time. But we can have easily, many times, talked ourselves into not liking each other. Like, many times. But what? Somehow there's a narrative, there's a willingness, there's a surrender. Like, hey, I know that Ricky, I can call Ricky anytime, Ricky's going to be. And Ricky knows I, I will do whatever I can for him at any moment, anytime. That's how life is supposed to work. We're not always going to get along perfectly all the time. You know, Thomas has sent me so much information, so much stuff, I'm never going to get to that in the next six weeks. And that might piss Thomas off. He might go over there. He, Kevin doesn't care about me. He's not reading all the shit I'm saying. No, I just don't have time. I've been really, really slow. But I don't think he's going to tell himself the narrative that Kevin doesn't like me. Because the truth is, I love Thomas. I've been really happy about our, our relationship that we've been building together. So everything is this willingness and this surrender and this beauty that we can create instead of telling ourselves bullshit. You know, kind of like Kim saying this other girl is the problem. Is the other girl the problem, or are you the problem for letting her be your problem? You know, I mean, there's all these things that happen to us, and we blame everybody else when we need to be talking to ourselves. We have to be awake. We have to be awake. We have to cast all the, all the bonds of what we know. We have to embrace just the flow. Let's just embrace it. 
Let's move from just doing, we have to be in control of everything, just to let things be. Let's just let it be. Let's be the observer. Let's say thanks. You know, when you get pissed off, just say, you know, I can see Bonnie getting mad at me. Like in my mind, I'm never saying it, but I can just, I can picture Bonnie upset at me. And if Bonnie was able to go, oh, feelings, all this anger and rudeness toward Billy, thank you. Thank you for showing up. What is it about, what is it about this situation that I can do to make it better? You know, if Bonnie was able just to say, hey, thank you, emotions. Thank you for elevating me, making me jump up and want to go, Billy! Yeah. To say, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. What do I need? If I can sit with myself, if Bonnie can sit with herself and go, what is it about me that I need right now? This emotion sprang forth for a big, important reason. What is it that I need? What can I tell the people I love? In this case, Billy. This is what I need right now. And maybe I'm too upset to really talk about it. Let's revisit this in a little while when I can come back to you with love and compassion in my heart. Like that's how we should always be. And I'm just making, I'm not saying Bonnie does or does not do that. It was just easy to put my eyes on to it. But that is a, um, that's true. It's something that we should consider is how do we sit with our own emotions? Ricky gets real pissed off when he works in truth. Like he's around some stupid people, and man, does he let it wear on him bad. Like bad. Instead of just going, okay, those people can say whatever they want. They really have no effect on my life whatsoever. Like zero. Well, damn it, Kevin, they threatened me. He said they was going to kick my ass if I didn't come in. Really? First of all, can he kick your ass? Uh, no. So then right there, what are you even worried about? Secondly, uh, why do you give a shit in the first place? It's an idiot trying to bring you down to their level. Why? Why can't you just sit with yourself and say, hey, why not? What just caused me to get upset about this other person? Uh, I'm at peace with myself. Why? Why am I letting somebody else's energy affect how I live and navigate my life? Like Thomas, sit with his self, saying, hey, I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out and become friends with these guys. I like what they've been saying on Sundays. I like what they're doing. I like their meditation. I like these things. I'm breaking out of this. You're just breaking out. Your buddy Steve. Man, he had like no reason to drive like eight or nine hours yesterday to be here. <laughs> like he had no reason to do that. But he was probably sitting with himself, hey, I need to be elevated before I go back home. I need to be around some good people. I need to hang out. Kyle wanted to visit with me last week. What Kyle did? He told me, he said, man, I sat for 15 minutes to make one rush and didn't come see you. Like, that's a big deal. To talk to, he sat with himself and talked to himself. And luckily, he talked himself into actually coming to visit. We had the best time. Like, I mean, we had a great, like, three or four hours. Like, it was phenomenally awesome. How do we sit and talk to ourselves? It's very, very important. We can take two pills, we can take a little bit of the red one. Just like in the Matrix, we can choose to be stupid and say everything else is everybody else's fault. Or we can take that pill of self-knowledge and start looking at ourselves. What am I doing to harm my life? What am I doing? Why is my relationships not where they should be? If you're not making enough money, why, don't you, why can't you just sit with yourself and say, hey, what am I doing different? Why do I feel like I need to be a slave to something else? Well, you can still be a slave while you figure out how to do something now. Everything is a choice. And I mean everything. Everything. I know that whenever I lived in a one and a half room trailer when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, well, right after I, from, after I got back from New York, so I must have been 20 to 22, I realized I didn't want to be in a one bedroom trailer. I thought it really sucked. I was like, this really sucks. Like, I didn't like feeling poor. I was like, man, being poor sucks. How do I not be poor anymore? Well, I'll figure the fuck out. And there's no reason why nobody else can either. Like, it's just, it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of self-reflection, and what are you willing to do? 
What are you willing to do? And everything is a state of being. And nothing happens the way we want. We can't force anything. We just have to let it be. And if this resonates with y'all, if y'all like this, when you're sitting on your couch and you've been debating whether or not you're going to come, because there's about 50 of y'all, I know you're watching right now, you tell me, I don't want to come. Well, oh, I'm afraid. I don't like crowds. Oh, what if they don't like me? We like you. We want to be around people that uplift us because we need each other. We need people with different experiences to help us in this life. Now more than ever. So thanks. We'll see you next time.